Rebuilding three Stuart steam plants, part five. Cleaning the steam chest covers was a long job. The only way to remove the paint from the cylinder covers was to machine them in the lathe, and the castings were surprisingly hard. For parts of this job, I even had to resort to using the belt sander. This opening clip shows the job well on the way. What should have been a simple job, making the steam chest look shiny like this, took over an hour. Normally, the whetstone would do the job, but it did not even touch these steam chest covers. I really think these are chilled castings. Even the sound they make on the whetstone is completely wrong for cast iron. There's a very high frequency note in there that you don't normally get with cast iron unless it's chilled. No matter how many times I rubbed the part up and down the whetstone, it really wasn't getting much shinier. It took long enough just to remove the paint. I tried some 400 grade wet to dry sandpaper and this actually did a better job at removing the paint at least. I was getting bored, so I did the job a bit faster. This is not a video effect, it's running in real time. Eventually, the paint was removed and the part was starting to shine, but it was very uneven. I decided to try one of these rotary abrasive things, and this made the job a whole lot easier. But just to clean up the front of each of the steam chests, took four of these, they just wore away. This part is not in real time, I increased the speed of the video. To clean up the edges, I used my bench-mounted mini drill, once again fitted with a rotary abrasive wheel. This worked and the paint started to disappear from around the edges, but so did the wheel, it got smaller and smaller. I persevered, but the process was far too slow, and now the second rotary abrasive was no longer serviceable. I destroyed the rest of it by removing the rust from the inside of the steam chest cover. Progress is too slow, but it's taking too long. Here's an A-B comparison between the two steam chest covers, one with paint and one without. Did I mention that I never like steam chest covers to be painted? They look better in bare metal. Please keep watching the series and you'll see what I mean. That's enough messing about. I'm going to use my belt sander to clean up these parts. The belt is quite worn, I wouldn't recommend doing this with a brand new belt, but with this worn belt it removes the paint and shines up the edges without damaging the part. And now as I showed in the opening sequence, they look like this. Time now to work on the cylinder covers, I don't want these to be painted either. I moved my Myford ML7R lathe down into the smaller workshop. I really do like this lathe. And one thing I like about it is the edges of the chuck are at 90 degrees. They're not chamfered, so you can hold very small parts very tightly in this chuck. I can hold the cylinder covers by the register that goes into the cylinder, and it's very, very small. But I can get enough purchase on it with this chuck to hold it solid and allow me to machine across the front, which is what I'm doing. I'm taking very fine cuts with a brand new carbide tip in a carbide tip tool. This doesn't feel right, it does not feel like I'm machining cast iron, and the finish that I got was diabolical. I changed the lathe speed, but all to no avail, I still did not get a good finish. Look at this, it's horrible. I changed the spindle speed, took a deeper cut, I changed the spindle speed again and took a lighter cut, but I could not get it any better than you see here. I'm now doing the other one, and this is the same. What terrible pieces of metal these are. I've seen this before though. I made an eccentric sheave a while ago for a triple expansion engine and I had the same problem. I thought the piece of metal bar that I'd selected was cast iron. While machining, the chips came off and it looked like cast iron, but I couldn't get a good finish at all. In the end, I realised it wasn't cast iron, which was the problem. This is the best finish I could get directly from the lathe tool. So I'm going to have to think about this. Irrespective of the lathe spindle speed, and here once again I'm changing it, the finish on the work was terrible. If you look on the Myford's cross slide, you'll see an Allen caphead bolt, which is holding a piece of bar into the T-slot. I made this so I could mount a Proxon motor tool adapter to use as a grinder for grinding difficult pieces of metal while they were being machined. I think I may try this. Not in this episode though, I'll probably make a one-off episode in the workshop topics series 
showing the effect of a die grinder on bad pieces of metal during machining. The alternative is quite difficult. Here I am back on the whetstone and even though I've been rubbing this piece of metal vigorously up and down the whetstone for a lot longer than shown here, it hardly made any difference. It cleaned the cylinder end cover slightly, but I need something a bit more brutal. Caution, if you're not used to using a one inch belt sander like this, try it with a piece of scrap metal first before you ruin the part that you're working on. I've had plenty of practice at this sort of thing, so it's okay. To clean the paint off the edges, once again I use one of these excellent rotary abrasive wheels. And once again, in no time at all, it was completely ruined and shredded. Note to self, buy some more of these. Thankfully, they are very cheap. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.